I'm gonna get on the four wheeler and roll this back a little bit so that bell lands on the flat spot. I'm gonna put a little bit of tension on it so I can get my spikes out. Sometimes you have to twist on those spikes a little bit to get them out. So you may be wondering why I'm not unrolling this bale with my Greg Judy bale unroller. Well, for one thing, we used to have about 30 cows at this time last year. But we sold about two thirds of our herd or so. We've only got about 11 cows right now and our bull and we are saving back uh, two heifers from last year so we'll have 13 when those two red heifers that red and that red white face uh, get old enough to breed so really uh, just for you know 11 to 13 head of cattle plus the bull we don't really have enough cattle to utilize unrolling the bale. And it's been wet and muddy. And so a lot of times when you don't have enough cattle to clean that bale up, you know, within the first day or two and it rains, uh, those cattle are just gonna waste that hay. So what I've been doing, what I've been doing all winter is bale grazing. And so you can see I set out a bale down there. The cattle have already ate on it a little bit. I set that out yesterday. There's another pile of hay that I set out yesterday that those cows are laying around. I set out that bale, that bale. I set out a bale over there. You can kind of see I had it zoomed in. You can kind of see the distance I'm spacing them out. You know, I'm kind of trying to pick areas that need work. You know, areas that had a lot of ragweed in it last year or areas where there's some bare soil. You can see this area had quite a bit of ragweed and stuff in it. And uh, I hadn't set a bell right here, you know, in this area yet so it was a good clean place to set a bale i've been trying to space these bales out because we got these calves and i try to space them out to where they're not laying 
in the same areas getting you know bacteria built up in the same areas and i've also been trying to pick spots that look to be a little bit drier you know so that when it does rain uh, it's supposed to rain again today and tomorrow we just had a bunch of rain last week so i'm trying to pick out spots where i feel it's a little bit drier to where the cattle aren't going to tear up the ground as bad you can see there was a, a old hay pile right there or not old but you know a spot that we'd set a bale right there and so you know we're guys we're just kind of bale grazing these cattle if it's dry i will unroll a bale for the first bale that i set out that way they can uh spread out a little bit they're not all gathered around the same bale and so i unroll that first bale and then i just set the rest of the bales out separately so you can see that these are twine tied bales and i am taking all the strings off of them you know a lot of people will you know i don't know about necessarily string tied bells but you know most people feel uh most people will feed bells in a bell feeder a hay ring you know or they'll just uh set the bell out there with the net wrap still on it this is some old uh some kind of you know twine off of a bale from the previous owners and we found a lot of this out here i've been me and the boys have been picking this stuff up all winter along with some net wrap that's been stuck in the ground but we always take all our strings off if they're net wrapped we always take the net wrap off and you know the idea is that the cattle will spread the hay out we want them to spread the hay out because it's gonna you know increase that fertility over a more broad area rather than just a mud hole around every bell that we put out here you know, if you just set this out in a hay ring or a, uh, you know, leave the twine on it or the, not the twine, but the net wrap on it, which I never do anyways, cause it's bad for the cattle. And it's, uh, you know, if it gets stomped in the mud, you're never getting that out. You know, we've been picking up net wrap that's probably been out here for 10 years. And that orange twine there has probably been out here for 10 years, but you know, yeah, they're going to waste some hay. But that's all right you're building your soil fertility you know we want some of these weeds to get smothered out in these areas where we're putting these bales we got a lot of work to do on this farm and it's kind of starting with this a lot of this farm grew up in ragweed the last two years really the first year we had it we didn't put any cattle on it because we was in the middle of that worst drought in 100 years, which was in 2022. So this last year in 2023 was the first time we had cattle on it. Previous owners had way too many cattle on it, grazed it down to nothing. And it all grew. We did have some decent grass earlier uh, in the year last year, but eventually it all grew up in ragweed almost whole farm was grown up in ragweed but we're gonna try to take care of some of that you can see where i've been setting some other bales and they'll kind of uh those are some bales i set out last week and over time they're gonna continue to uh, eat on that hay nibble on it until you know it gets uh smoothed out you know across spread out across the ground You can see all these locust trees growing up. That's going to be a long-term project, trying to clean up all those. I want to show you guys some better grass that we had. Up here in this in this part of the pasture, this is kind of our middle area of the pasture. It grew up in a lot of ragweed too, but it had some better grass in it. It had the probably the best thickest grass 
on the whole farm with the, an exception of one opening back there in the timber that's got a lot of gamma grass in it. Right there's the pond. And uh, some of this grass they ate really good at certain times of the year, kind of later in the summertime they didn't eat, eat the grass as good. Um, you know, not sure what kind of grass it is. I've been told it's got some Bermuda grass in here, but I'm not for sure on that. I'm not real familiar with Bermuda grass. Uh, but this area is where we're planning on building the house at too, kind of up on that hill, you know, up in this area. So I've been trying not to unroll too many bales out in here because I don't know how much space the house is gonna take up and everything right now. And I don't really wanna waste those bales up there. If it's just gonna be covered up by house and yard anyways. So we've really been trying to work on this area down here and the area between those trees, beyond those trees, there's another, our biggest patch of pasture. And, uh, that area is super filled with ragweed right now and uh, before it got real rainy and muddy i was putting all of our bales down there to try to spread some fertility and some some uh, native grass seed out of these bales i've got some red clover bales been trying to spread some of that native grass seed and clover seed down in there along with you know, trying to take out some of the ragweed and increase the fertility down there. So, we're looking to get some warmer weather. It should start drying out in the next week to two weeks. And I'm going to start putting those bills back down there to try to work on that end of the farm. We've got some new calves. We've got some cows getting ready to have calves. These two cows here are getting ready to calve here in the next, oh, two to three weeks, maybe even as far out as a month, but they're both getting pretty close. These are probably a couple of my favorite cows right here. Short, stocky, keeps their weight on. They're good cows. That bell on the ground spread out right there was a clover bell. They're still eating on it. There's our bull chilling out. You know, this is just our second year owning this farm. So we've really only owned it for about a year and a half. This is our first year grazing the cattle on it. And uh, one of the challenging things about taking over a farm like this that wasn't really taken care of the way it was supposed to be is trying to, you know, get a handle on the weeds that have grown up, you know, get a handle on that naturally because we don't spray any uh, herbicides or chemicals out here we're all organic and regenerative so the challenging part is having to try to deal with the weeds and and the fact that this farm was overgrazed and uh, now we've got to deal with all this uh, aftermath you know but that's also kind of the exciting part is to take a farm that's been overgrazed and kind of ruined really you know not taken care of and uh regenerate it and be able to actually see and realize all the work and sweat that you've put into rebuilding this farm it'll be nice to look back and say you know that used to be a farm that i was embarrassed to own and then you look at it after you've regenerated it and it's probably the most one of the most beautiful farms in the area and our kids are going to be able to say 
You know, we watched our mom and dad work their butts off and turn this farm into something beautiful. And they're going to be able to tell their kids that. And they're going to be able to say, and we helped them do it. Our kids are involved in this farm. They always will be. And we're teaching them how to be regenerative. And they're going to be able to teach their kids. And they're going to be able to see firsthand, you know, how to take a farm that's been abused and turn it into a rich, productive farm. Not rich as far as money-wise, you know. Of course, profit is nice, but rich as far as uh, having rich soil, rich forage. The cattle will be healthy. You know, that's ex an experience most kids don't get to have. This is Tim with the Van Leeuwen Family Farm. Y'all have a good day.